show with any regularity. You know about me is I'm a guy who questions everything. Um, I like to kind of buck the system a little bit and do things my own way. <laughs> and um, our next two guests are very, very similar. They're two of America's leading chiropractors, and actually they're local family here, right here in Stockbridge, Georgia, if you're watching in the Atlanta area. Lucky us, we get to have them here. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. the reason I, I start out by saying that I'm somebody who likes to buck the system is they're the same way. They've asked the question, why does it have to be that when a woman walks into her OBGYN's office and they fill out this little piece of paper and they say, okay, Mrs. Smith, this is how you're going to have your baby. You're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, you're going to check in, you're going to push the baby out, you're going to go home and you're going to feed it this and it's going to raise and everything's going to work out, right? Well, our next two guests are two people who said, mm, that ain't the best system necessarily out there right. and we want to show you how you can properly plan for the end results. In other words, if you want a healthy, well-balanced, healthy, functioning child, this is the formula that you need to follow to do it. And it's very contrary to the way that the world system is currently set up. So it's my pleasure and privilege this evening to introduce you to Amanda, doctors, mm -hmm. Amanda and Jeremy Hess. Yep, welcome. Thank you so much welcome, for being guys. here with us thank this you evening. for being here. Yeah, yeah, thank you. We're so glad to have you guys here. Yeah, this is really cool because we, we love, you know, out-of-the-box thinkers, of course. And again, like Rick was saying, so many times we think, well, just because the doctor said it's supposed to be this way, it's supposed to be this way. And clearly it's not. <laughs> yeah, clearly. I mean, when I was first pregnant back in 2006 and all my girlfriends were pregnant as well yeah. or even sister-in-laws, you know, they would be telling me these stories about how their birth experience went and it just wasn't the ideal situation. Before it. We understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Ours wasn't, mine wasn't either. Yeah. Yeah. So I started questioning things. I started questioning, well, you know, are all these procedures necessary? Mm -hmm. You know, if I do go into a hospital, is it likely that I am going to be able to have a natural childbirth without any medication? And, and have things the way I want it. Right. And so I did my research, you know, found out things like the maternal mortality rate in the United States as well as the infant mortality rate is really not where it's supposed to be. Wow. And that the care here is, you know, maybe not the best health care mm -hmm. um, in the world. And so we started saying, well, what can we do different mm -hmm. and how can we have this pregnancy that. and this childbirth go the way we want it to? And so we just chose a different path. And, you know, that's what we want people to do is just think about, you know, there is other options out there yes. for mm -hmm. yourself as well as, you know, for raising your family. Right. I'm sure my husband can, you know, go over all the statistics about how the children these days are more medicated now yeah. than ever. Yeah. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Our, our kids, we have a, like we we're just saying, a four-year-old right? four birthday party tomorrow, actually. Yay. And our daughter's almost seven. Yeah. You survived. We survived. Yeah, the first couple of years, we're, we're getting, yeah. Sweet. So, uh, but, you know, our kids are in that, you know, elementary school age. And right now in America, elementary school kids, almost a third of them are on drugs right now. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, not just a you know, two-week antibiotic or a little thing for the strep throat. Close to a third of them are on drugs right now, pharmaceuticals. Right. That the doctors are telling their parents and grandparents they'll be taking these drugs for the rest of their life. Yeah. Wow. You know, and that's sad. It, it you is know, sad. It's interesting because the statistic, I worked for um, a major drug company for years, and one of the statistics blew my mind was a doctor who said, in 1950, pediatric type 2 diabetes did not exist mm -hmm. unless you had pancreatic failure. Yeah. It didn't exist. And yet today we're seeing type 2 diabetes in, in seven year olds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it's like you said, it's a result of all the environmental factors of, mm -hmm. you know, the sugar and things. And it's a shame because you set a kid up now for insulin diabetic dependence for his whole life yeah. and, and ADD age. medications mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Right. I, I was, were you guys always passionate and interested in natural health and healing the body from within the way that God designed? Or is this something that happened through an experience in your life? Uh, for me personally, I, I grew up in a very um, normal American home mm -hmm. where we went to the pediatrician, we went to the doctor for all our well visits, right. you know, got all the vaccinations, which back in the 80s was less than a third of the vaccinations that yeah. they give children now. Wow. Um, so, I didn't realize that. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's much okay. more these days. Yeah. Um, so, and I grew up in a medical model where if you were sick, you know, you were in bed, you went to the medicine cabinet, got your pill. Yeah. Yeah. If it was really bad, then you went to the doctor to get something stronger or to the pharmacist and that type of thing okay. and then it gradually went into my 20s where in my 20s I found myself being told that I needed antidepressants mm -hmm. Wow um, yeah that's the first, if you do go to the doctor yeah. and you say anything like I'm having trouble sleeping or I'm a little sad sometimes that's the first thing they'll give yeah, you well, 25% of women now are on antidepressants I totally one believe four. that I you totally know, and, believe and, that and uh, even in the body of Christ they say it's higher 
Wow. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's a sad situation. Well, and you know, I was sharing just a little bit of my story, you know, that we've shared with the viewers many times about ever after coming out of a coma, every doctor that I went to just kept giving me prescription after prescription. And you, you're just, you buy into this mindset, sure. if the doctor says it's right and they push yeah. it across the table, three at a time, four at a time, you just take it. Mm -hmm. You just well, take it. Yeah. I think, you know, having worked with a lot of physicians, I think the problem is, is that somewhere along the line, medical school stopped being about treating people to keep them healthy and more about managing symptoms yeah and you know and literally and, and it's not the doctor's fault a lot of them are right. so overworked no, now right. they're seeing 40 to 60 it's to 80 patients yeah. Yeah. in an hour but now it's almost like when you go to your car mechanic they go okay what's wrong all right I'll fix that instead of looking at the symptoms and 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 it's great to hear that you guys are focusing in mm -hmm. on that yeah because like when you were talking about getting shots in that it, it's like the minute you challenge the way things are supposed to be well, that's that's really odd because, like, with Pierce, our son, we went to the pediatrician and said, "You're going to break up the shots. We don't want three shots in, you know, two mm -hmm. in one leg, and one in the other. You're going to break them up. We're going to come." And he's like, "What?" You know, well, it's almost like alien concept. You know, it's all. It's now, wait, where well, you two have been? I'm mean, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, like you said, it was questioning, like questioning any right. type of protocol. Yeah. So the protocol. Yeah. For a pregnant woman, when they go into the hospital, you right. sign these papers, yeah. and you're not really given time. I mean, you're in labor. Are you right. going to sit there and read every it's like single being line in a car of paper? Accident, you know? yeah. yeah, just For sign here, and yeah. you yeah. just do what we tell you. Exactly. Yeah, and so then you're just at the mercy of the protocols, right. and then if if you're not progressing like you're supposed to in a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. then this intervention is going to happen, or then we recommend this, and then it just becomes like a snowball effect. Right. Of, of what happened. And if, yeah. they, and if you challenge that system, you look, they look at you like you have a second they do. head. You know? Right. Like, mm -hmm. What? Yeah. So it, it was just so many women that came to us that started saying, and we kept hearing again and again, yes. I wish I would have known. Right. If I would have known this, I would have done things differently. Mm -hmm. And that's through our whole practice, specifically with women yes. and pregnancy. And it screams so loudly there because, you know, another statistic that's scary is, you know, the number one uh, surgery performed on women now is C section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A third of babies are born that way now wow. through C section. So, A third. yeah. Uh, so it's scary. And, and I think one of the, you know, we kept hearing even very healthy young women, you know, 19, mm -hmm. 22 year old. When you would see them, we'd be taking care of them. They'd be, you know, healthy. And they'd done everything right, and somehow on the other side, they ended up being induced C-section. It was like, how, did, how is that possible? Right. You know, so exactly. it, it just seemed like... Look at how the numbers are just yeah. exponentially growing and growing. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested. So you guys, did you meet in chiropractic college, or did you all like have a passion no. to start your business together? How did that happen? Because this is cool that you were. It wasn't together. that romantic. <laughs> hey, she oh. got a restraining order against me, so you know. I uh, we met. Not quite that severe, but close. No, that's right. So there we go. It was close. We met in a trendy area in Atlanta called oh. Buckhead. Yes, we know Buckhead, that girl. We grew up here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he was in school. I was entering school. I was waiting tables. Tables. He was parking cars and asked me out in a parking lot. Yeah, she parked in my Excellent. parking lot. Aww, so you guys had high power sweet. jobs at the time. Yes, 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 yes high power. <laughs> okay. And then was this your dream, obviously, then to work together? Uh, so, okay, and, and open. It. What's the name of your business? It's Discover Chiropractic in Stockbridge. Excellent. And so you guys are one of the busiest chiropractic places in the state of around. Georgia. It's amazing. That is amazing. So people are hearing about you. One, they're drawn to not just the chiropractic, but this mindset. Mm -hmm. the, the mindset of just that the body created by God, designed yes. by God, and that it has the ability to heal from the inside out. So paint for you know? me, if you would. That's beautiful. Um, Jeremy and Amanda, the, uh, the typical patient that comes through the door the first time, what does that person look like and what can they kind of expect from you guys? Mm -hmm. I, I think the typical, we call them practice members, the typical yeah. practice member okay. is someone who, you know, has been down the road. I, I'd say, you know, we do have a, a portion that are actually children come in first. Mm -hmm. So parents actually bring the children in, okay. a colicky baby, a child with ear infections, uh, maybe a, a toddler that has recurrent um, immune system mm -hmm. dysfunction. So we do see that. Mm -hmm. And then the other side is typically a practice member who, you know, maybe 35, 45, maybe 55, in that range okay. where uh, it was funny because, you know, we said when you're younger, maybe you're a teenager, you grow up in a house, you just take things out of the medicine cabinet. Right. Okay. Kind of low level stuff. Right. As you age, the problems seem to become more chronic. Yes. Now all of a sudden you're at the pharmacy. Now all of a sudden you're getting prescriptions. So I think that it's like a snowball effect where a lot of our people, when they come in, it's like, hey, I know why I was on that first drug but I don't know why I'm on six or seven exactly. now. Exactly. How did I get from one? Yeah. I know, as a matter of fact, I even know what that one was called. Now I'm on six or seven. I don't even know what they're all called or why I'm even taking them. Exactly. So I think that's the common person we see now. 
Yeah. Um, and the common person of there's got to be a way out of this. Yes. There yeah. has to be so a better say, way. So it's yes. more, so it's more people get fed seeking. up with the scenario and say, I'm on one drug and seven drugs to manage the side effects of the first drug. Yeah. And and so I and, and I'm done with medical science and I'm coming to you guys. What a different answer. Yeah. Because yeah. I guess because see, I didn't grow up in a chiropractic family like she did. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was okay if my back hurts, I go see the chiropractor. But you guys are telling me that there's a lot of other things that mm -hmm. chiropractors treat, including ear infections, otitis media, things of that nature. Yeah. Well, but we're, we're nervous system specialists. So yeah. the spine, mm. where all the bones are, the nerves are coming out. So wherever those nerves are going to, whatever part of your body, whether it's your ears, your heart, your lungs, your digestion, mm -hmm. if that nerve is being interfered with, mm -hmm. right. Because the bones are out of alignment, then your body's not going to function the way God intended it to. Exactly. So you probably then would find yourself really working in an area of pain management where people are on chronic pharmaceuticals, oxycodone, oxycontin, and things like that, having to then manage those patients. Those are probably a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Just the, the whole range, and you know, that's what's great about, and that's one of the reasons we are such a large practice because we cater to so many, especially family care. Yes. You know, we like to take care of the bait. We love doing nothing better than that first week or so, yeah. first baby's adjustment. And that, that brings me to this which yeah. is Baby Designed by God. Um, this is a first in a series of three, right? So yes. congratulations Thank on you. this. Yep. So tell us about your heart for creating this book. Again, I just wanted to create this book to let moms, let families know that there is a better way mm -hmm. for you and your family. And it doesn't have to be the mainstream medical model that all of us have right. grown up knowing. Yeah. Um, because how that's going to end up again like we were saying is you're going to end up on all these medications maybe you're going to end up having surgeries that you didn't really sign up for right. and there's always a cause and effect to what's happening within our health and yes. lifestyle and lifestyle changes need to be made as well and so we just want to educate people to say you know what let's think about some other options right. here yeah. and and maybe do things differently or not repeat the same mistakes that maybe my mother made or I think that's my beautiful. grandmother. Right. So this is all about educating and changing mindsets because then if you can reach this generation and then they bring their children to you, Absolutely. you're impacting the next generation, which Absolutely. is how we change our world. Absolutely. Well, I think that's a great beautiful. evolution that we're seeing now is the era of the more educated patient with the advent of the internet and physicians mm -hmm. like yourselves who are writing books and that. It's not like a hundred years ago when somebody's from, well, this is what the doctor said. Now, I hear from a lot of the physicians that I interface with, you know, patients will come in with literally a stack and say, well, doc, I've been online and this is what I've found. Yeah, the internet kind of changed all of that, you know, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so it's really great to see the era of this newly educated patient. Yeah. So, and it seems like you guys have done a great job of really embracing those folks and helping to get them on a continuum because from what I'm hearing from you is that not every patient is going to follow that same continuum, much like modern medicine teaches nowadays. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And not everybody wants to necessarily make the lifestyle changes or the changes that need to be made. Right. No, it's just like saying it's, you know, it was just now January 2014, now it's February, I want to lose all this weight, but not everybody is going to do what it takes exactly to get to the end result. Well, it's a discipline, it's a lifestyle. I think that everything, and we always talk about this, you've got to be willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think even our first guest mentioned that about talking about overcoming is not being a victim, mm -hmm. that victim mentality. So for someone, even like with me, when I was on all mm -hmm. these prescriptions, I had to identify like, whoa, this is an issue, this is a problem. And it does take work to get off prescriptions, but it's worth it. I mean, and it seems like, especially with this, um, you know, your book, Baby Designed by God, you're giving, you're empowering so many women to say there's other alternatives, there's other yeah. options. You know, one thing I find is that it's like a cliche now, you know, people perish for lack of knowledge. Yes. Yeah. We hear that so much in church, or, and it's kind of like, but, but truly, still in the area, in the realm of pregnancy and birthing and raising children, there still is such a lack of knowledge. Right. Oh, amongst the, uh, the common mom or dad and raising the, having the baby, raising it. It's just so many things that they don't know what to do. Right. And what happens is that when they're a mom that's, you know, have teenagers now or even a grandma, right. which we hear from grandmothers all the time, if I want to know, I, know. I would have, you know, I'm I would sure. have had the four tubes in my, you know, son's, uh, now he's 24 years old, right. or 34 years old, he had four sets of tubes, how comes I didn't find you, you know, 30 years ago? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, that's, it's kind of like, Let's let's move ahead. Let's prevent that from happening. Yes, That's and so you, you encourage people to challenge. Yeah. Question, question. I know you do something you said out of Spartanburg recently too. This was some kind of a training module. Was yeah. this? Yeah. What we do? do is we also have a program. We mentor chiropractors and actually now natural health providers to really um, have a more of a passion and emphasis on just educating the community and reaching out and in awesome. and, and the natural health community specifically chiropractic and just really going after it and and actually making a difference. Mm -hmm. You know. So is this something that people can sign up for as well through your website and Absolutely. find more about? 
about? They sure can. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell, you, yeah, tell us your website and where people can connect with you and get all your resources. It's uh, for the book. Uh, it's design dash by dash god dot com. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So, okay. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Do you have a website for the practice as well? If somebody yeah. might have heard and said, yes. hey, I need yeah. to see these folks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go discoverhealth.com. Perfect. Wonderful. Definitely check out their website, their resources. And on, and on the designed-by-god.com, they've got a video there, about a four-minute video there, that I checked out today. And it's wonderful. It tells you more about them, their practices, some real-life stories that you're going to really connect with. Uh, you can also connect with Dr. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, Jeremy and Amanda on our Facebook page and find their resources there. But right now, we're going to go listen to some music. So enjoy. Enjoy.